Hi, welcome to Frog Education. You guys can call me Mr. Frogman. And now, before I get started, I want to tell you what this channel is all about. I really like frogs, and I want to share the magic of these beautiful creatures with the world. Now, there are a lot of frogs. I mean a lot of frogs. And each one is interesting and unique in its own right. So going forward, each video is going to focus on a specific species of frog. Now, you might be wondering, why do I like frogs so much? Well, they represent the ideal lifestyle. You can sit in a pond all day, if you're a pond frog, of course. Uh, food generally comes to you. You got none of that nasty hunting business. You've got some guaranteed good vibes. And you can just spend winters very cozily just chilling in the pond, of course, if you're a pond frog. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, that is a fantastic photograph. I cannot wait to see stuff like this in every single video. Well, I've got some bad news. While I can go out to my local pond and snap some pics of a few flavors of frog, I want to talk about a lot of flavors of frog. And uh, I don't really exactly have uh, access to a jungle in uh, New York State. So I need to use internet pictures. And using internet pictures is cool and all, but you know, it's the internet. Not all of them are free. And uh, we all know how YouTube be with copyright. So to avoid infringement, I'll be enhancing the visual experience with my own hyper-realistic frog illustrations like this one. Now, before we go off and start talking about all these cool flavors of frogs, I need to frogicate you on what exactly a frog is. So, let's get started. Frogs are a type of amphibian, coming from the Greek word for living a double life. The sneaky boys can live on both land and water, which is pretty cool. They're able to do this by using some wacky black magic called cutaneous respiration, which means that amphibians can breathe through their skin alongside a pair of lungs, which is pretty cool. However, there is a catch to this. In order for cutaneous respiration to work, their skin must be adequately moistened, leading to the signature sliminess of amphibians. Another key trait of amphibians is their life cycle. They start off with a distinct larval stage where they're pretty much just a fish, but no body of water can hold a powerful amphibian, and eventually they just grow legs and waddle on out and start doing their own thing somewhere else. And of course, the classic amphibian larva is the tadpole, the baby frog. Now that you've got a general overview of what an amphibian is, let's get a bit more specific. Frogs. Frogs belong to the order Anura, which literally means without tail in Greek, of course. I like to imagine the naming scheme for this, right? You have these two Greek dudes, they've been studying frogs their whole life. And you know, they're looking at Tab and it's like, oh my gosh, look at this thing. Two thirds of it is tail. That's a lot of tail. This is really cool. I have never seen something with this much tail. But then it grows up into a frog. Like, bro, where'd the tail go? We're calling these things without tails. Everything, every single one of them. If it resembles this shape, it is a without tail. It, it's just, it's distinct. That, that, that's that's where the name came from, I guess. Uh, now, it is important to note that both frogs and toads belong to a neuro, and you better bet I'm talking about both, because toads can give off some seriously good vibes. And now, while they do both belong to the same order, there is a reason why they are frogs and toads. Frog typically refers to the classic water-dwelling slimy flavor, while toad is a very lumpy land-dwelling one. Fun fact, toad lumps, right? You know, you've probably heard the old wives tale of, uh, uh, oh, don't touch the toad, you're gonna get warts. Well, it's, uh, kinda true. Toad lumps are generally filled with poison, right? Uh, poison's not too great. Uh, it's, it's pretty harmless for humans, I mean, depending on the toad. But your pets, right? Don't let your pet, uh, eat a toad. Or just, like, lick a toad or ingest a toad, or just don't let their mouths near toads. It's bad for both parties. And also, since toads are more land-based, their skin is generally thicker, and also, when you think of toads, they're pretty dry. So they rely a lot less on cutaneous respiration, and instead rely more on their lungs, because that's better suited for land. Now, it's time to talk about the signature part of the frog, which is not their tail, which they are without. It's their legs, because frogs jump. Everybody knows that. And if you don't, well, uh, <laughs> you really need this channel. The frog's jump is actually, it's pretty cool. Not only do they use their muscles, but they also can stretch their tendons to act like a spring, which gives them a very powerful jump, allowing them to leap a much larger distance than they would normally. And of course, these big long frog legs are very useful when they're swimming away. And that here actually in the legs is where another key difference between the frog and the toad comes in. So since frogs live in the water and most of the land time is spent vibing on the edge of the pond, they really only need to jump to escape predators or catch prey. They don't need to move around on land much. Toads, on the other hand, are vibing all over the place, and so they typically need shorter legs with less big hop potential, more of, hey, you gotta, gotta keep moving, you can't just sit in one spot, otherwise you might get like squished or 
swooped by like a bird or something, which ain't great. Frog need to eat. So what do they like to munch on? Well, of course, it depends on the frog. Uh, the classic frog diet, of course, is bugs and insects and stuff like that. Uh, but some species are much less picky and will eat things like mice, fish, crabs, snakes, small birds, other amphibians, sometimes bats, and probably a lot more. See, the general rule of thumb seems to be, if it fits in my mouth and it doesn't kill me, I'll eat it. Now, I can't talk about frogs eating and not mention their tongue. When I started researching this, I did not expect it to be this cool. First, uh, just like their legs, the tongue acts like a spring and can be launched from their mouth at prey. Then the saliva comes to play, which is really, really cool. So it has two states, watery and mad sticky. So when it first leaves the mouth, it's sticky. But then when it hits the prey, right, it turns into its watery mode and gets everywhere. Every single crank in the insect gets filled with its spit. And at that point, the prey is yoinked to its demise. Now, you might be wondering, how does the frog control its saliva? The answer's pretty cool. Their saliva is a non-Newtonian fluid, just like oobleck, which is what you get when you mix the cornstarch and water. So oobleck, right, when you punch it or you hit it, it saw, it's a solid, it's a quill. That's, that's a solid, it's a pretty solid solid. Uh, but when you're holding it, it just melts like a liquid. Now, that's frog spit, basically. Uh, hitting, hitting frog spit turns it into a liquid, but it's normally glue. And as you can imagine, having something that's like water, they splash over something and then have it turn into glue is pretty pretty great for snagging things. Once the prey is in the frog's mouth, it's basically dead. The frogs don't really chew, they just kind of munch on it a few times and just swallow it. Interestingly, frogs use their eyes to help swallow things. Like when they close their eyes, the muscles used for that kind of help relocate their meal to the stomach. Now, of course, frog eyes aren't just used for swallowing, and they allow the frogs to spot predators and prey. And the genius placement of these eyes allow the frogs to chill in the water with only their eyes sticking out. And their eye sit is nothing to croak at either. Not only can frogs see a near full 360 degrees around them, that's two pi radians for those using metric, but they also have some phenomenal night vision to boot and can even see colors in the dark. And now, since we're doing the senses, ears. Frogs don't have any, but they have an eardrum. It's the little circly bit behind their eyes. Frog ears are pretty basic compared to human ears, um, but they have a pretty cool feature. So the frog ears tune to the frequency of its mating call, allowing them to weed out background noise and hear only other frogs of their species. Certain frogs don't even have eardrums and they just peer through their mouth, which is pretty cool. After hearing all these cool frog facts, I've got no doubt that you're excited and you want to go try and find a frog for yourself. And boy do I have some good news for you. Frogs can be found here. Notably, they cannot be found here, 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 and here. Uh, that's because in these places, liquid water is not really around. And as we covered earlier, for uh, cutaneous respiration to work, uh, liquid water is pretty important, and it's uh, pretty crucial for the frogs to do the whole uh, survival thing. Along with these places, frogs are also absent from these assorted islands. Why? Well, if frogs and their ancestors didn't colonize the islands before those islands gained independence and floated out to sea, frogs can't exactly swim there because, uh, but let me tell you a little secret about the ocean. It, it's full of salt, and uh, again, cutaneous respiration, uh, that salt would go inside the frog, and uh, if you fill your bloodstream with salt, <laughs> bad things are gonna happen. Now, you may have noticed that some of these places on the map that were green, they get pretty cold, but only sometimes. So uh, how does a frog deal with that? Well, it depends on the frog, but uh, generally need to find a good spot. Water frogs, they just partially bury themselves in the mud, a uh, complete burial would suffocate them because the whole cutaneous respiration thing. Land frogs, they like to just dig into the ground, wedge themselves into logs and stuff like that. But that doesn't always work, and the frogs might freeze. But, 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 they won't die because they're filled with like this weird sort of antifreeze. So while their heart stops, among other things that might be considered bad if that happened to like a mere human, they just kind of chill for the winter, but then when their location starts getting toasty, they warm right up and hop away like nothing ever happened. Now you, you may think, wait, I think, I, I think I've seen this before. Well, if you watch the high quality show Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, season 1, episode 13, Aang needs to go find uh, a remedy for his sick friends, and that remedy just so happens to be some frozen frogs, and uh, when they thaw out, they just start hopping away. It's actually a pretty good example of this whole frogs can get frozen and not die thing. Now, uh, if you found a frog and you're very adamant about picking it up, 
remember to keep your hands wet because humans love oil so much it oozes out of our skin and uh, shocker that can be harmful to frogs also things like lotion and sunscreen can get absorbed through the frog's skin and uh, that's not great and you know I don't think a human would want that stuff like injected into them like never be too sure these days you know just treat frogs and all animals for that matter with the same respect you would give to a human if not more respect because you know people are kind of jerks i hope this video has like opened your eyes to how cool frogs are and if you want to see more videos on frogs i'll probably make some eventually i'm really excited to learn more about these little guys and share this information with you speaking of information if you don't trust what i said i put my sauces in the description and if I got anything wrong, please tell me. I don't want to spread any misinformation around. There's plenty of that already. Wow, you made it very far in this video. Uh, to reward that, you want a bonus frog fact? Of course you do. So, also this is a bit of a PSA. If you see two frogs like uh, like this, they are in fact um, uh, re reproducing. Basically, each frog has a secret family recipe for some special sauce, and each frog likes to add their own personal twist to it. And when it comes time to get uh, funky, Papa Frog up there starts oozing out his secret sauce while Mama Frog does the same. Once the sauce is mixed, a new take on the recipe is made, and the sauce turns into baby frogs. Yay! One of this is if you see two frogs uh, hugging it out, just, just like leave them alone, because uh, yeah, you probably don't want that in your hand.